Hi, and welcome to the fifth edition of the video uh, diaries that we um, do every week uh, to showcase the development process. As you can see from the main menu's background, this is a Halloween-themed update that's coming at the end of the next week. And we have a special background. We also have a very special soundtrack that you can hear right now. Uh, we call it uh, the Abandoned Clockwork Town. Uh, it has been created by Anna over the last three weeks. Let's quickly go over the changes that we will introduce with the autumn season uh, that will last for about seven weeks. Following that, it will be replaced in December by the winter season. First of all, we have two new cards. The, we've, we showed those cards in the previous diary. One of them is called Toxic Waste. It's a criminal card and it's playable on the plant. The other card is called Evil Statue and it's also criminal. It's also the first permanent criminal card. But don't worry about too many criminal cards being introduced to the game. The following cards in the next updates will not be criminal. And as the deck gets bigger, the chances of getting hit with a, a card that makes you show your hand are getting lower. Now let's move on to the inventory. And we have, first of all, the new type of chest. It's a pumpkin chest. This chest is also uh, uh, connected to the autumn season. It's available only within the next seven weeks. You cannot get this chest outside of um, the autumn season. Uh, during the autumn season, during the next seven weeks, you will get regular chests as well as pumpkin chests. The chests are not becoming exclusively pumpkin chests, so there is a certain uh, a random factor in whether or not you're gonna get that. And inside of the pumpkin chest, you can get one of the 10 new items that are seasonal. So you can either trade them on the marketplace outside of the season, or you can get them during that season. Um, let's maybe take a look at the, uh, the, the item of the highest rarity that we've ever had in the game so far. Uh, it's the rarity level illegal, so it's uh, it's level number five. I'm not sure we're gonna go beyond that. And that's the infinite battery. How does it work? You can choose any uh, regular item in your collection. And normally those items, they require charges. Let's say a global effect, you play it once to three, four times, and then you have to reload. So the battery, can make any of those items permanently working so you don't have to recharge it at any uh, time in the future that's a very rare item and we expect that maybe 50 such items will be dropped every month so uh, just to give you a comparison to give you an idea every month we get about 20 to 25,000 items coming out and this is the rarest of them all now let's move back and take a look at the other items. This is a new item uh, called the battery uh, and it's tradable on the marketplace. You can build it with crafting and then you can trade it. So that's an alternative means to uh, getting charges. You can uh, deconstruct, convert some of the common items or you can just get a battery, uh, trade a battery or build a battery and then you're gonna have 20 charges. Now let's go to um, the collection and take a look at the new items that we introduce. Uh, two new lobby icons. One is called Prisoner and that's gonna be available throughout the whole uh, game time. The second item is Seasonal, so you can see that there is a new uh, line here in the description saying Set Autumn and it will be uh, rare. It'll be becoming available only during the seven weeks of the autumn season. Now we got a main menu background that you have already seen. It's only available in the next seven weeks and following seven weeks it will be replaced in the game with something else. Uh, but if you would like to keep that background in your collection, then you have to get this item and then just use it there. The next item is a new global effect, which we call Rise of the Automata. We thought we could show it to you, but actually we don't think we'll have time because we just did the Russian update and it was almost 20 minutes. So you'll be able to see it yourself next week. Um, this is a rare global effect and that's a seasonal global effect. So you can either get it during the next seven weeks or you have to find someone who got it during this weeks and trade with them. 
Now we have four new emoticons that uh, people requested on the forums. This is called Slow Clap. So I think it's pretty obvious <laughs> how that uh, is going to look in the game. The next one is called Enjoying the Show. And I think in the Russian it's called Eating Popcorn. So basically that's what you do when two other players uh, battle each other in the conflict. The next item is Seasonal, and that's a spooky love uh, of a pumpkin head. And the um, other item is also seasonal, Halloween themed, that's a cost. Now, we all know that according to the lore, gremlins don't die. But sometimes they, they feel like they're almost there. Uh, this is the uh, emoticon for one of those times. We have four new phrases, including attack the leader, surprise, and the horror. Actually, we have three of them. The white square down there is the uh, new player profile that's going to be rare, and it's still a work in progress. Now, this is a new item, a new kind of item that we've ever produced. This is something that is available only within the next seven weeks, unless you're going to trade it. And it replaces the usual misfortune delivery system with a pumpkin delivery system. Now, whether or not that's going to be popular, that's another thing altogether, because I think maybe there'll be 500 such items uh, uh, overall in the game. Yeah, that's not very common. Finally, we have the music track that you hear right now. We call it the Abandoned Clockwork Town. It's a pretty spooky tune by Anna. And outside of the season, it will be available um, only as uh, an item drop like this. Now we have crafting blueprints and I have to explain a little bit how this works. Uh, if you have a blueprint, one of those, and there is more coming in the next updates and in the next updates, then you're able to use your charges to actually construct from them new items. So this blueprint of a battery allows you to build a 20 charge battery from 20 charges. So nothing lost. You just repackage your energy and then you can trade it on the marketplace uh, for something else that you want. The other blueprint that is uh, very rare, that's almost the final level of rarity. So we have common, uncommon, rare, then we have contraband with the golden background right now. And then the uh, uh, highest level of rarity we support right now is illegal. This is what you've seen with the infinite battery. So the blueprint of regular Glendon chest will allow you to build chests from 30 charges and then let's say you spend 30 charges building a chest you land the chest and inside that chest you get something really really rare so that's one of the options and then we have pumpkin chest note that it's very expensive it takes 100 charges and it's only available during the autumn season but if you land at this item during the autumn season it means that you can then craft autumn items at any time in the future. Uh, there's 10 autumn items that are exclusively available for you as drops during these seven weeks. And then there's 10 items that we introduced that are just old time items and they will be coming and going and everything. Now we spoke a little bit about crafting. Uh, there's four new achievements coming in, but that's insubstantial. We get new items, 10 new items. And now let's take a look a little bit about uh, on the balancing. Um, first of all, if you go to the rulebook, you're now able to see player initiative. A player initiative determines which character type um, has uh, starts starts the round. So if you play as the engineer and someone else plays as the gambler, you'll always be making the first uh, turn in the round. Uh, this for, first of all, you get this this list. So you can always take a look at that and uh, figure out which character you want to choose if that's critical to your strategy. And secondly, we've changed a little bit the order of initiative. So if you used another list that's available on the forums before, you may want to update your uh, planning to this. Now, the next change is um, there are three changes in character abilities. So the first change in character ability is the change for the thief. The thief used to start with one malice, no longer, no longer he has any starting malice. Uh, the thief also used to get half of the money 
uh, paid by the other player. If the thief loses a player conflict, now the thief gets all of the money that the other player uh, pays to win. The other character that we've adjusted a little bit is the politician. He used to get uh, three score points when winning the elections. Now um, you can get two score points, so we're making it a little bit weaker, a little tiny bit. Um, the character with most changes is the merchant. We reworked the ability uh, that was called Move It. So now when you're using a, a card with six move points for movement, you can ignore all the bribe spots that you pass through. Of course, very handy when uh, trying to ascend to the astral plane. And the second ability that we introduced is called Stop. Or, yeah, Stop. Probably should call like Move It and Stop It. <laughs> you could use you can use one move point card to stop at the misfortune spot and then you don't have to pick a misfortune. So basically it's a trade-off. You move slower but you uh, avoid the misfortune and sometimes it makes sense. Uh, some of those cards that have one uh, move point, they make you skip the next turn, so that's even more penalty. But it really depends on your strategy and in certain situations we believe this will be critical to winning. We also changed six uh, cards from the core deck. Uh, the first is called Personal Search. It used to be free, it's a card available in the court, and now that card costs you one vote to play. That's pretty similar to the other recent changes we've made, so the court becomes uh, the place where you uh, pay with votes, and votes are becoming more and more important as a kind of an in-game currency in parallel to the money. The second card that we've adjusted is called an Honest Exchange, and it used to be free, and now the card costs you 50. That's uh, the card that's played in the marketplace. Uh, by the way, those of you who have the card game will recognize this nice uh, gentleman who's also on the back side of the card deck. Now, the next card is called the Setup. One of my favorites, it's played on the police spot, used to be uh, 40, now it's 50. So yeah, you can also see where it goes. Um, Operation Cleanup used to be 30, now it costs you 50 to play. So basically it's getting more uh, expensive to control the other players through these cards. We have an inspection, which used to cost 20, it now costs 30. And uh, the final card that we've adjusted is called Properly Paid Bribe. That card used to give you malice when you play it. That's no longer the case. So, yes, it no longer teleports you to the astral plane of the Inferno. You can just move to any bribe spot and you have to pay the bribe when you land there, but it no longer gives you malice. Now, three more news for uh, next week's update that you uh, may be happy to hear. First of all, uh, our game designer has taught the AI uh, a couple of new tricks. There's two new strategies, two new, let's say, areas that have been uh, improved. Um, and we will keep working on that. We will keep uh, making that better. Um, oh, by the way, just want to say hello to a player called Depp from Japan. If you look at tips and tricks on this screen, there's uh, there's a very sound advice from him. The other improvement is the change in team mode. Now, when you search an opponent, when you look at the uh, hand of your opponent, then not only you will see these cards, but also all your team members will uh, be able to see the same cards. So you don't have to uh, read those cards aloud over Skype. You can just, everyone will see, everyone in your team will see those cards at the same time. Finally, changes to teleportation. You could not teleport to your own spot, to the same spot where you're standing. Uh, teleporting meant that you have to go somewhere. Uh, that's no longer the case. You can teleport to the same spot where you are. So if you're playing a card that you just want to offload and maybe get some money or get an extra turn, but you don't want to actually jump somewhere else, now you can do it. That, that's a general change in the mechanics applicable to all the situations. And that's about it. We will do another video next week where we will talk, hopefully, about the, uh, about the two new features uh, that we're currently developing uh, for the autumn season. 
and both of them have to do with tournaments um, as for looking to uh, give you a little bit different player experience uh, um, as we go into the autumn season thanks for watching and see you next week meanwhile if you have any questions just uh, go to the forums and steam and uh, post the questions there and we'll um, respond uh, uh, as, 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 as long as we know the answer see you next week and all the best